I declare the meeting open. I'm sorry, I'm three minutes late at three minutes past seven. Welcome everybody, welcome our visitors, and welcome to our new councillor, Councillor Hutton. Thank you. And, uh, right, this is the extraordinary meeting of Arundel Town Council, Tuesday, Tuesday the 1st of August, and um, first item on the agenda is apologies for absence. Um, I've had apologies from Councillor Peel and Councillor Fuller. They both apologised, okay. Do we have reasons? Um, one is away on holiday and one has been at hospital. Right, okay. Do we accept the apologies for absence? So. Those in favour? Thank you. Moving on to declarations of interests. To receive and consider any declarations of interest from members and officers under Section 50 of the Local Government Act 2000 and our standing order 35. This requirement applies only in respect of matters which are to be considered by the Council at this meeting. Uh, firstly, to declare any disclosable pecuniary interests. No. no. To declare any other interests. No. Councillor Chapel. Um, as a member of the Blackthorn Neighbourhood Plan group, I just declare that interest. Right. Okay. Um, we perhaps all ought to declare that we have interests within Arundel um, as regards neighbourhood plan in that the majority of us live um, near or have, an have some sort of interest in sites within the neighbourhood plan. So as a blanket cover, okay. we need to make that note that Arundel residents will of course be near to one or other of the many sites within the plan. To consider any requests for dispensation? No. To report any gifts or hospitality accepted over the value of £50? No. To report any inappropriate gifts or hospitality offered? No. Right, we come to public participation from interested parties or members of the public. Um, do any of the members of the public present wish to say anything? at this meeting? No. No. Nope. Councillor Stern, nothing, nothing to add? Nope. No. Jolly good. Okay. Um, consideration of requests from interested parties. We've had no approaches from interested parties. Um, we move on then to the main item tonight. Um, the draft neighbourhood plan. And the first item is to receive an update on the neighbourhood plan and consider the NPS report. Um, where, we've, where we've been since the last, um, since the last time this group met as a neighbourhood plan group, um, we have had a response back from NPS. You remember the report, the neighbourhood plan went to NPS for their consideration. We've received back their report, which in the main um, is pretty favourable. There are a number of cosmetic changes and there are one or two other changes, um, a lot of which have now been put in place. Um, we have had from James Wilson, our consultant, an updated copy with the majority of the changes that he's made, um, implemented. There is one change he's noted he hasn't made and he is working on that. Um, we have also, we're waiting on East North Ants Council to prepare information in a couple of appendices to the plan. Um, and I've prepared an appendix on uh, a draft, draft policy uh, for uh, coalescence to attach to our neighbourhood plan. And that is now forming part of the plan. Um, so that's where we are as regards NPs. Um, the rest of the update, um, it's moving quite rapidly at the moment. Um, you'll see further on we've got a timeline document to consider. Um, Mark Felton and Mark Benz, 
who are members of the former working party, um, have helped to produce that and to get that up to date. And I was working on that with Mark Felton yesterday afternoon to get that to its present state. Um, we'll come to that one as item three on the agenda. Um, but a lot of other things have happened um, and we are uh, progressing. Um, we have now received the final report on Fletton House. We now have the decision on that. Um, and I think that may well be, it missed the agenda for this meeting. That will be considered at our next full council meeting. Um, one of the other items that's come in since, we've had a letter from um, one of the developers, ProVision. who um, they've, they've uh, sent a letter to myself as mayor of the council um, pointing out, as you've all seen in the copies that you've got, um, their concerns regarding their particular site. Um, so um, unless there are any reasons to do this in closed session, I'm happy to do this with the public present. Um, we want to be as open and transparent as possible, um, but if there are any issues which turn out to be either um, commercially sensitive or um, are um, in any way personal, then perhaps we will have to close the meeting and consider it in closed session. Is everybody happy with that? Yep. That we continue in open session? Did you, sorry, Mayor, have you got um, a letter? Did you send copies of that letter? Mm. Mm. Um, I don't know if I've got a spare one with me. They were email. They were attached to the email. Um. I'll lend you my... You found it. If not, I can lend you my clean copy, the one I haven't scribbled on, but if you can let me have this back, please, Councillor Humphreys. Thank you very much, Mayor. Um, they write expressing their concern on um, four particular topics, openness and transparency of the neighbourhood development plan process, um, an apparent conflict arising from um, one particular councillor's involvement in the neighbourhood development plan process and I'm going to allow that councillor to speak. Um, I'm hoping he's going to keep it down to about five minutes because we've got a, a very full agenda tonight but just specifically to deal with the comments made against him. Um, the third point is a failure to effectively plan for a cross-boundary site. And the fourth one is the lack of effective consultation and engagement in the preparation of the Oundle neighbourhood plan. Um, the first one they mention is a lack of transparency and openness. Um, and then most of this seems to relate to a neighbouring parish. As you will see, the, the opening paragraphs are mainly about events at a neighbouring parish and um, what they are saying there I think is that um, things have gone on in both parishes um, and progress has been made um, and um, it's not been as open and transparent, in other words it's not been as public as they would have, uh, they would have liked. Um, I think they've, uh, there, are, there are some misunderstandings about some of the things in here, um, but um, basically uh, the majority of that, as I say, is for Glapthorne to answer. Although this letter was sent to me, it's also been copied to them and a lot of it is for them to answer. Um, one of the... Um, 
points they raise is that they were under the impression that they had um, an agreement with Glapthorne to develop outside of our boundary, immediately outside of our boundary. Um, that certainly is not my understanding from attending a few Glapthorne meetings and from the correspondence I've received as a parishioner in Glapthorne. Um, but um, they seem to think they had an understanding and their concern is that in some uh, meetings which they regarded as secretive, um, although they were minuted and recorded as tonight's is, um, and they've read the minutes and they've also listened to the recording because some of the comments they've got here can only have come from the recording. Um, they, um, they are saying that they think something has gone on and they're asking what has happened to change Glapthorne's mind as Glapthorne are not now considering that site. Um, I feel that with the way we've handled it, we have been open and transparent and the neighbourhood plan for most of its time since it was first formed has been open and transparent. The meetings are again as they were previously in, uh, at the start of the plan. They are um, posted on the notice board with the appropriate notice given by the clerk. Um, they are in full council. They were previously with neighbourhood plan groups but they're now in full council. Um, we have an agenda which is posted. We post our minutes. And as I said, we also record the meeting and those recordings are available for anybody to listen to. Um, so I think on that subject, um, we have been um, relatively transparent. Does anybody have any comment they want to make on that? So no, I'm, I'm just not sure whether with this we, we ignore it completely because most of the points seem groundless or whether we go to the trouble of replying and clarifying that the process has been open and transparent. The reason that Blackthorn changed their mind about the development was because they shared their neighbourhood plan with the community and the feedback they got was that they didn't want to proceed with that. You know, it's all, it's all self-evident, it's all in the public debate. I, I'm not sure what the right, right thing to do is, whether it's to... Uh, you know, state the obvious back to them for the record, mm. or frankly just ignore them. Uh, and I don't know what else is used. I, uh, can I just say, I don't think you should ignore them because then you're falling into the same trap of actually not engaging with people mm. you know, who've got, um, you know, got their own interest or part of Does anybody it. else have a... Yeah, I, I must agree with the council, Glenn, that uh, I think we need to respond to it because it uh, just confirms our openness and willingness to, to, right. to, to be there. I do think we need to seek um, all the professional advice we can get before responding. Um, we've, had, um, we've had a brief email from our consultant and I think we need to talk to him further. There's a possibility that we may meet him later this week um, and find out his thoughts on this um, in detail. Um, but, uh, as I say, the majority of that section appears to be aimed at uh, Glapthorne, but the bit that aimed at us is that it would appear that when we had our meeting, um, which they commented on, uh, immediately after that we wrote a letter, um, and following that letter, Glapthorne appear to provision to have changed their minds about developing that site. Um, my own view of that is that the Glapthorne Parish Council recommended, their neighbourhood plan group recommended to parishioners that the sites on our boundary were um, rejected from their plan um, for a variety of reasons that they didn't meet the criteria and that's in a document that I passed to you at the last meeting. Um, and um, they rec made that recommendation to the people of Glapthorne who were then invited to a number of presentations by the developers and um, the, uh, after that the, they had a vote, they had an election um, 
a ballot uh, in which they uh, collected votes on who was in favour of the recommendations of each of the sites within the Glapthorne plan. And this particular one, 80% of the residents endorsed their recommendation that this site was rejected. So 80% of the population of Glapthorne who turned out and voted rejected this site. Um, that, uh, that is uh, on record, that is um, documented. Um, so why they thought they had an agreement with Glapthorne, which somehow we've managed to turn around, um, bewilders me. Um, does anybody else have any comments they want to make? Um, well, maybe it's somebody who sits on Glapthorne as well, and substantially misrepresents the position as far as I can see. But I think it is for Glapthorne to answer most mm. of this mm -hmm. section yes. of this letter. Yeah, I think with all due respect, Councillor Chapel, because you sit on both, it's probably not wise. Why I've only wise. Said that one word. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, because they have, within this letter, pointed out that although you declared your interest in the meeting on the 22nd of June, um, you did in fact um, then comment on the plan at that meeting. Um, you, you've made comments on this particular development. Um, and uh, they, at the time, felt, or within this letter, felt that you had interests, which I think you're going to put us straight on in a while. Um, <laughs> um, moving on to um, the, um, the, the conflict and prejudicial interest is going to be covered, as I say, by another councillor, um, because it involves him personally. Um, Failure to effectively plan, plan for a cross-boundary site, I think we need to seek professional advice on that matter. Do I have any comment from the floor on that particular item? Does anybody have a view on that? Um, they seem to have got most of this from our last meeting, um, so I think that what we need to do is to seek um, advice from our consultants and um, then act and I'll review this at our next meeting um, acting on their advice um, the lack of effective consultation um, I mean, what they seem to be getting at here is the fact that within our terms of reference for the Andal neighbourhood development plan um, it was made clear that there would be consultation and engagement with local residents um, before the preparation of the draft plan. Um, now, there was a meeting planned um, in 2015, which unfortunately had to be cancelled at the very last minute because of um, circumstances beyond our control. Um, that's where the people of Glapthorne would have been told what was going in their neighbourhood plan. This letter has come out only weeks ahead of um, us publishing the Oundle Oracle, which will contain a page which shows what's happening next, which is all the engagement with the public, which includes a town meeting, a presentation on the neighbourhood plan, it uh, includes um, surgeries to be held here in Fletton House where anybody can come along and discuss it with plan members and councillors and uh, um, that can include developers if they wish to, to join in with that process. Um, and we're also um, going to have a stall on the Saturday market and the Thursday market where again, there will be representatives present who can talk to any concerned residents of Oundle and talk them through any queries they've got on the neighbourhood plan. So I think that um, we are doing everything we can in the immediate future. And this was planned long before this letter came in. So we haven't, it's not in reaction to this letter. We got these things programmed and planned and we discussed them at our last full council meeting before this letter. 
um, we have these items in the plan where we are consulting with our public. Um, are there any comments on that? Councillor Chapman. With a certain amount of temerity. Um, I think this item effectively rather links with the third of these items about approving the plan management and timeline document. Yes. My concern about this is that everything that's in here needs to be in here. And the timescales are entirely realistic. Mm. But what it doesn't include is what we had talked about at one time, which was before we actually went as far as the Red 14 consultation, we actually gave the developers an opportunity to engage with the public. Um, by presenting what it is that they propose, what the benefits are that go with their particular developments and so on. Um, and my fear is that it, unless we do do something like that, that the complaints that are in the fourth section of the provision letter may well come back to bite us. Mm. Um, surprisingly on one level, because of course provision had seemingly accepted what was going on. They've been totally involved in the whole drafting of the document in the first place in terms of their side. Um, but nevertheless, I, I would like the idea of get, letting them and all the other um, partners that we put forward in this plan to actually have the opportunity to do this and, and put that in prior to the full Road 14 consultation. Which is similar to, in a sense, what they did in Blackpool, hmm. where they had two <coughs> meetings, a Thursday evening meeting and a, a Saturday one, where, uh, well, they had a Thursday evening meeting where there was presentations, and then a Saturday meeting twice, where the developers could come along and engage with the public and answer their questions and so on. And I thought it would be useful to have built in something like that, particularly in view of the unfortunate mm. delay after July 2015 in a two-way public engagement. There has of course been public engagement, there's been things said at town meetings, people have been made aware of what the sites were and what was likely to be in the plan. Yep. Nevertheless, it wouldn't be a substitute for the sort of thing that I've just mentioned. Right. Any other comments on that? I think if we can schedule something then um, ahead of the um, the public participate the um, public engagement bit, if we can put something in before then um, into um, September, because we're planning. You'll see on the timeline we're planning to um, engage with the public through October and November, and make any updates to any proposals they have. Um, I think it would be too short a notice to do anything in August, but um, would you be in favour of us trying to organise some event in September? Yeah. And I'll liaise with the clerk as to when that event will be. Those in favour? I'm just abstaining because I don't You're, know you're abstaining, that. okay, that's fine. Yeah. Yes, that's fine. Um, so I think that's carried. We'll try and arrange something, Clark, for the um, September period um, to bridge this gap in, in the uh, effective consultation. Um, well, sorry, Mayor, will all of this go into that letter that you're going to send to ProVision? The, the things you've just been discussing and the fact that we have what our timeline is, so, they, so it, it, it countermands this last paragraph, this lack of effective consultation, because we have been effectively consulting people, yes. it's just that the timeline is stretched yes. beyond theirs, so as long as they're aware of that, so mm. all of that information goes into the reply, yes. I think that's quite important. Right, we'll make sure that that's minuted and that we, it's also on the recording, so um, they listen to our last recording, I'm sure they'll listen to this one and they'll hear that comment and I endorse that comment that things like this timeline are in any response we make to them 
um, after we've consulted with our with our experts. The timeline just hasn't been invented now. It's been it's been around for a long time. So it's, it's been around a very long time. <laughs> yes, and uh, it's just um, it was recently updated as recently as yesterday afternoon. It was um, checked again and uh, slightly adjusted in line with um, what is what is currently happening in terms of being able to get a hold of. Um, an investigator to look into the, an inspector to look at the, the plan. Um, that's where part of the rate determining step is getting hold of an inspector. Um, so if you're all happy with that, I'll move on to the next items on the agenda. If I could have that like back, Councillor Andrews, if you don't. Thanks. Mr. Mayor, do you want me to address the points that yes, please. myself at this stage? Yes, yes please. Um, I don't know how many of you have got the letter in front of you. Uh, it runs to some five paragraphs uh, in relation to myself. Um, I'm very conscious of the Mayor's time scales. I think I can do it in probably less than five minutes. Um, I will accept that I am a member of Angleton Council as I have been since 1986. Um, it's not of course accurate to say I sit on a neighbourhood plan working party because there isn't one. It hasn't been one for some while. It's actually been dealt with in house, although I have had involvements in the working party. Uh, I won't detail them extensively, although anybody who is interested, I would certainly be able to provide that information. Um, but of course, it is now a matter that the plan is in the ambit of Angle Town Council, and my involvement in that is as a councillor and as chair of the planning committee that has been. Uh, involved in the entire neighbourhood plan process, um, particularly since the um, outside working party, if I can call it that, or working group, uh, provided the draft plan. Of course, our consultant James Wilson was effectively prepared as a result of the work he did with them. Um, it is not correct that I am a member of Gatling Parish Council. I am not, and I never have been. Uh, though it is true to say that I was asked by Blackthorn to assist their working group because of my experience in relation to the annual plan. Uh, it talks about Blackthorn Parish Council requiring members to declare certain interests. And they say that I've declared that I'm a member of OTC, but I've not declared that I have an active involvement in the annual neighbourhood plan. Um, it's not really accurate because, of course, as the Andrew Town Councillor, by definition I'm involved in the plan because that's where it, it's held from. And there can be no doubt from everything I have said publicly in any meetings of platform uh, that that is the case. Um, it is true to say that I have had um, some involvement, some direct involvement, in relation to both the Andrew and platform plans. Um, whether I could actually truthfully be said that I can influence the formation of policies in relation to both depends on how malleable you and my colleagues in Labrador are. Um, I seem to note that around the table I am one of, um, what is it, what do you think, there's something here now, but uh, 11 councillors. Um, I would be I could easily be in a minority of one, the same would be true in Blackthorn. Um, they suggest that because of my involvement in the Angle site, I couldn't be objective in participating in discussions in Blackthorn with relation to the same site. Um, I don't agree with them. It seems to me that as a resident of Blackthorn and somebody involved in that process, I'm entitled to hold a view in relation to it um, and to express that view uh, to the neighbourhood plan group who can take as much notice of it as they like. Um, as the Mayor has said, Blackthorn has engaged in very extensive public consultation. It's the benefit of being a relatively small village so they can get response rates of around 70% or better, and with a response rate of 70% or better, 80% of the respondents did not like the site and agreed with Blackthorn's position on it. 
Um, but perhaps the most fundamental flaw to what um, Provision has stated is that it seemed to be living in some kind of time warp, which is roughly two years behind the event, in as much as I moved from an address that indeed, indeed did fall to that site um, as long ago as September 2015. Um, I had actually sold the property subject to contract even prior to the public meeting that was pulled in July of 2015 and I am perfectly confident that such involvement as I had in the process to that point was entirely proper and of course it's gone through very nearly two years of work since then including independent scrutiny, drafting by an independent consultant and then peers review. Um, make of that what you will. And um, the one thing that seems to perhaps be an issue, is that when I moved I obviously informed the former clerk so that my register of interests etc could be altered and indeed so she could post things to me although everything is emailed. Um, it may well have been the case that the former clerk for whatever reason failed to pass that on to East North Hands. Indeed some councillors around the table may remember that um, it wasn't that long ago that the clerk actually thrust um, the appropriate interests form in front of me and asked me to physically amend it uh, to show the changed address because despite the fact I'd asked for it to be done it hadn't been. My understanding of the process and the clerk will correct me if I'm wrong is that the information that I give in to this council is then passed by this council to ENC. So of course it is entirely possible that information I thought that had been passed on to ENC in September of 2015 wasn't. I suppose I could and should have checked my own register of interest at ENC, but when you pass on the information, you rather expect it to be acted upon. Now, obviously, I should be contacting ENC to make absolutely sure that there is no doubt. ENC, of course, have been more than aware of where I am living, um, because I have been engaged with them in various ways in the intervening period. Mm -hmm. um, but um, whilst, of course, if I had remained living in that site, I would have no doubt been one of those most directly affected by the plans and would have taken an appropriate course of action. The fact of the matter is that situation did not arise. Um, I would hope that if any formal kind of complaint were made in relation to that, that I would be vindicated, I would expect to be, and I would cooperate in such a process. But um, what I will do um, and I have engaged with the Mayor about this, is that since there are matters in here that relate to me personally, it is my intention to respond. I have agreed to delay any form of response until such time as Andal's own response had been formulated, not least because it would be distinctly unhelpful were it to end up with me saying one thing in a response and the Town Council apparently saying something different. Um, so we shall coordinate, but I will be replying in my own right in view of what is said. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to say that. Thank you very much, Councillor Chapel. Um, does anybody have anything they want to add to that? Any comment anybody wants to make? Yeah, okay. Well, just I think we will feel today. It's, uh, David's pointed out, it's, it's erroneous and out of date and inaccurate. Um, and whilst I can see that people might, from some tenuous legal point of view, try to winkle something out of there, it, it's, to me there's just nothing of any significance or, or substance there. So, it's people with too much money and uh, too many lawyers just trying to pick holes in this. Right, so okay. I, I, I want that to go on record, it's a personal view. Thank you. So, all state, so. Okay, fine. Um, any other comments? Councillor Oakes. I'd just like to say to Councillor Chapel, thank you for being so open and transparent. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on next then to the uh, letter received um, from Glapthorne Neighbourhood Plan Group and um, we need to, um, they're asking for a response to that as well. We need to consider this letter and decide how we might respond to this one. Um, they acknowledge receipt of our letter. Um, 
they express their disappointment that we've decided not to proceed with um, what they saw as uh, development of um, a, a joint policy of coalescence, they've called it. Um, they, um, they feel that they had a partnership with us. I think those of us who met with them um, we went with one proposal, they came back with a quite different proposal and um, I think uh, that, that's, where it, that's where it still is, I think, that we, we went with a, an idea that we would both have a similar form of words in our plans to deal with this situation of coalescence um, to the benefit of both. Um, they uh, came with this proposition that they would like to develop this particular provision site. Um, we discussed it and decided that we didn't want to go with that, that we were happy to go with a joint form of words to go into both plans. And we're still trying to formulate that. Our consultant has formulated the words. We've sent those words to them. Um, and um, what they are saying is um, they would, um, they haven't gone ahead with this um, site in their own plan um, and they s seem to say that it's entirely because of us that they haven't um, and they are asking us for more detailed reasoning, um, more detailed response around our reasoning for um, rejecting that proposal. So I think we'll need to um, sit down with our, again with our consultants and they will need to create the right words to deal with this, um, to formulate this response. Um, uh, any, any other comments on that letter? Can I, can I state for the record that came from the public gallery? <laughs> and I was not looking in the direction of the public gallery. Um, but, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, no councillor has a comment to make. We will look at this in detail and um, the clerk and I, with our consultant, will formulate a response and come back to you with whatever that response is so that you all see it and you're all aware of what we're doing with that. Is everybody happy with that? Yes. yes. Just the point, Mayor, that we did actually discuss that at length, didn't we, at mm. the last meeting and that we've covered. We did. We did actually cover all of that. Yes. I'm saying this for the record, so it's... Uh, yes. So everyone knows. Yes. Did, 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 did yes, we're going happen. over old ground, I think. They're, they're asking for more detailed the logic of adopting different policies for what is a single coherent site. They're, in other words, they're saying, we seem to have two different policies for either side of the border and things like that. They're wanting us to declare further than we've, than we've gone before. Um, but... Uh, we made that very clear in our last meeting. I, th I think the, so the too. Reasons, the reasons why we didn't want to... Yes, this. yes, so. yes. Um, I think this is probably to help them um, to prepare any response because I suspect they've had a copy of this provision letter which we previously discussed and they will obviously feel they need to respond to that themselves and they obviously feel they might themselves get one from provision addressed to them directly with a copy to us <coughs> in similar terms. So I imagine that that's why they'd like to get together. A little like provision of the divide yeah. and conquer. Yeah. Is, it seems to be the game they're playing. Yes. Um, we, they mentioned they'd like to get together and work jointly with us. I think we're all happy to do that. Um, and I think if we can arrange a meeting, we have got one or two councillors who've said that they will work on um, a joint um, we'll work on, we'll work on uh, attending meetings with developers, with neighbouring parishes and whoever to progress this plan so it may well be that that's one of the meetings where um, we will meet with Glapthorne 
Is everybody happy with that? Okay. Um, if we're if you're satisfied, we've covered that one. We'll move on to the uh, management timeline. Um, we've got two separate documents. One of them, we've got them in hard copy because they only came in, as I say, I discussed them with Mark Felton um, yesterday. Uh, he's done an excellent job of preparing this information for us. He has a huge understanding, enormous understanding of how this process works. He and I put together what we thought was a realistic timeline. Um, you've got um, the draft um, plan is now, we've now agreed the draft plan. We're in the process of doing the final edits of the NPA's advice to us. Um, we then need to agree that, um, we need to accept that draft in, um, he's got it in August, it will actually be our meeting at the beginning of September, <coughs> 5th of September, the equivalent of this meeting. We will then accept that revised draft. Um, we'll then begin the um, Regulation 14 consultation. Also in September, we'll now try to add this other consultation with our public and tell them what's in our plan and give them advance notice of it. Going out beginning of September, there's a one page item in the Oracle, which is just bullet points really of what's in the neighborhood plan and what it means for the people of Oundle, uh, really to whet their appetite for what's coming next. Um, so we've already started to put stuff out to the people, but we will now onto this timeline. Um, Mark Felton and I will add in an extra level of consultation uh, to go before the Regulation 14. Regulation 14 is where we have six weeks of consultation with our public, during which we have, as I said, this town meeting um, where we will present the plan and they will be able to ask questions. We'll have these surgeries here in Fletton House or elsewhere if necessary. We'll have market stalls where they can come up on market days, a Saturday and a Thursday, and talk to us about the plan. And um, we will have whatever other events are necessary within that six weeks to convince the public, uh, well, for them to make their minds up, um, that the plan is for them um, so that they know all about it. We will receive their responses. You can see we've got in there on the timeline when we analyse those responses. That's the, the six weeks is October and the beginning of November. So the back end of November, we'll be analysing those responses. We'll modify our plan back end of November and then draft two, version two, will be accepted beginning of December, um, ready to go then for um, the consultation stage as part of the examiner's work. The examiners will then come in, I believe they then require six weeks to examine. They will also consult the public, um, the same kind of consultation that we've done. That will take us through, as you can see here, January and February, through that, um, once the examiner is appointed, and that could be the determining step. It may be, Sean has told me, there are something like an average of five neighbourhood plans on ENC's table at any one time. There are 200 authorities around the country like ENC. That equals 1,000 plans on a district council table at any one time. And trying to find enough examiners to deal with a thousand plans and keep the thing rolling on program is, is proving difficult. They're looking for more examiners qualified to do that, but that might be the hold up. Sean did say in the worst case scenario, it could be as late as this time next year when, um, before we can talk about a referendum. But we are looking at best case, preparing the material for the referendum in place in May, holding the referendum, 
Um, we we'll then have the summer holidays coming up, so we're looking at a referendum um, straight after the, the summer holidays. Um, that's, that's looking realistic at the moment. Uh, does anybody have any comments on that plan? Just one comment, Mayor, that the, um, we did have uh, the public meeting, if you remember, when we had that earlier in this year, there was a comment from the public about uh, being informed and that they, they felt they weren't informed. If we can make sure that it's not only the neighbourhood plan is not only publicised in the Oracle, but in every single way we can, mm -hmm. including Facebook, everything else, we need to make sure that nobody can turn around at the end of it and say, you didn't ask us, mm -hmm. you didn't tell us. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to hand on heart say everyone knows about this. So there's no excuses. Right. I agree with that. Any comments to that? Anybody got anything they want to add to that? Could we change the date? Change. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. We're telling everybody. Yes, we should have our neighbourhood plan in in place by the end of World War One. <laughs> yes. Yes. You've noted the deliberate mistake. Mark Felton has obviously uh, not noticed that one before we sent it out. Yeah. Yes, we are working in the in, in 2017 and 2018. Thank you, <laughs> Councillor Chesser, for pointing that out. Yes. <laughs> right. Accompanying that, you've got effectively the same thing in type um, in a separate document accompanying this Excel spreadsheet. Um, so the details are there of what happens and when. Um, if there are no further questions to that, that brings us to the end of um, the neighbourhood plan timeline. If everybody is happy with those, with that. Um, Councillor Stern, I will. I'll close the meeting. Uh, May Councillor Stern. I make a couple of comments, please. Right. Um, so we now move on to the next item on the agenda, item 1759, to approve the September Oracle draft for publication. You've all got within your pack the next edition. You've all got within your pack the next edition of the Oracle, which we, if you approve it tonight, it can be printed. Um, it will go to the printers during August and we will be ready to distribute to everyone, to everyone through everyone's door, um, end of August, beginning of September, albeit there's a bank holiday uh, likely to get in the way of that. Um, but by early September, everybody should have a copy of this neighbourhood plan. I understand that we were short of a few copies last time. And I believe that the Warren Bridge development houses um, didn't all get a neighbourhood, uh, didn't all get an oracle. Um, so I believe that we're making a bigger circulation this time. We're getting more copies to make sure everybody gets one through their door. Um, hopefully there'll also be enough to put some through the doors of the shopkeepers because they, they have also commented some of them don't receive it unless they're residents of the town as well. Um, any comments on the September Oracle? <laughs> Sorry, it seems to be me all the time. Um, can we, in this Oracle issue of the Oracle, there is this whole thing on education in here. Um, yep. The Prince William reply is in the blue box. The Andal Church of England Primary School is in a different format. Yes. And then there's another little bit, I don't know who put that in from Andal School, in a completely different Format. Yes. Is it, it, I, as, as it's one of my nig, uh, niggles about but if we're sending the publication out to the public, that the format of this publication should be right. And having different things, dis, disparate things just copied and pasted into a piece of paper, 
doesn't look very professional. If there's some way we can actually make those, especially those three things, look the same, it would make the publication look a whole lot better, I think. Right, okay. It's seen, it's seen, you know, when you look through it, which mm. I'm doing at the moment, you just look like, well, someone's probably to place it a bit there, and someone's put another bit there, and another bit there. There's no coherence to it, and I think that's very, very important. And we did actually discuss this last time when we were looking through it, that as a publication, and we are a prof supposedly a professional body, as such, I say, yes. um, we, it, everything should be, you know, this format, this which is one of our primary sources of uh, public consultation. It should, be, it should be looking good. And at the moment, um, in my opinion, it looks a bit like it was cobbled together. Sorry to anyone who did cobble it together. But, um, Any other comments? <laughs> Councillor Ropes. Would you have it anyway? Yeah, no, well, yeah, um, I can, you know, not at the moment, because I haven't got time, but because uh, it needs to go out. I mean, it's, just, it's just one of those, those things, I think we should be aware of that. Are there any other comments on the Oracle? Um, do you want those changes made? Um, I mean, every, everyone might be perfectly happy with it, and it right. just might be me being nitpicky. And you know, if um, that's the case, then I'll just leave it alone and go crawl back into my. Well, I, I throw it open to all of them. To... <laughs> does anybody want to? Does anybody agree with Councillor Humphreys that we change the style of it and make it more uniform, or are you happy with it the way it is? Can I can I have a response from someone either, Councillor Chapel? Well, I tend to agree with Councillor Humphrey that certain consistency in style and approach is generally going to be a good idea. So, if it is possible, yes. I, think I don't think it's possible in, in the short frame we've got because this is September's issue. I think we're up against it. But in future, if it's possible, and I am, I am willing to help with that. I think if I've got time. Um, that would be much appreciated if you can help us with the oracle. Um, does anybody have any other comments? Any other comments? Um, are, are, you, are you saying let this one go but well, bear that in mind I'm, for the yeah, future? I, or? I think everyone, no one's saying anything, so I'm assuming everyone's... Well, I, well, I don't know who do the work on this stage. No, no, we can't. Well, I, mean, I, don't, I, I think I, it has well, to go. I, I I everybody probably agrees with you that there should be consistent throughout. So, mm. Yes. Um, right. Well, what I'm asking for is, do we have a proposal to to approve it, or do you want it amended? Um, well, I, I propose that we accept it. Okay. <laughs> no, you you made your point. I think we'll we'll take that on board. Second. Second. Okay. Those in favour of approving the oracle? That's unanimous. Uh, thank you. No. no. Oh. You've abstained. Yeah. Councillor Oaks N has abstained. Okay. Um, right, that's fine. Um, any other relevant matters to report of um, the club? Maybe I've got one. Um, I've received. Um, a claim for damages, damages from a lady that had an accident in April when she was coming out of the bridge club. Um, she fell over. I think the lights weren't on. She tripped over the curb. So um, at the moment, I've passed this on to our insurance company and just wait for them to come back. Can I just ask, Harry, is that the first we've heard of that? Um, we knew about it oh. and I reported on it um, in May. Right. Um, at the Maple Council meeting. Um, um, but this I was is asleep at that point. <laughs> I was at that meeting. Then obviously, yeah. this is the first time, obviously, that I've, we've had received okay. this. Yeah. <laughs> right. So this has gone to our insurers, and we'll await their response. And uh, 
how they how they wish to deal with it. Um, any other points? Is there anything else? I haven't got anything else. Um, right, I don't think we've got time to go around the room unless anybody's got anything. Oh, well, just one thing before we're talking about things like that, it might possibly come up um, in the future. I'm obviously uh, approached by a member of the public the other day um, complaining that they nearly got off, knocked off their bicycle because on the, the trees along the side of the passage, go past Picatha along the side of the football ground. All the trees have its branches growing out the bottom of them, and they're forcing they're forcing mm -hmm. cyclists to move a long way out into the road, and potentially they need to get knocked off. Is that were, along New Road, so uh, our recreation uh, ground? Uh, no, 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 along what is it, Station Road? Is it the, bit, yes, the, the road that goes along across the road right. from the wreck? So, so where, where the car is and yeah. where the football ground is so yeah, there, as, sure. you head in, as you head into town. Oh, that bit, sorry. I just thought I needed to, uh, uh, as they asked me to, if I bring it up now, because it potentially we don't want endless claims for things. Yeah, if, if it's a high risk, issue, I'll put it on the street doctor. Right, yeah, the street doctor. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, if there are no other relevant matters, and we've had our time, it's now time for planning to, to take over. Um, I bring the meeting to a close then at spot on eight o'clock. How's that for timing? The meeting is closed.